What separates Icon boats from the rest? Is it the styling? Is it the functionality? Is it the ride? We've been told we're the best built boat in the market. We put together the best team in the industry, inside the factory and out in the field. From the legacy of Hydra Sports to the creative ingenuity of HCB, it's a collaboration of years of experience. This is what we're made of. I'm Chuck Pippen from Icon Boats. I'm here in the Icon plant with Andrew Clements, our head of engineering. We're standing in front of a boat that's been cut in half. This is our L2 live well system. We're gonna talk about why we built the, the live well the way we did. This looks like it's a cooler that's been cut in half. Can you explain that? Is that unique to Icon or does everybody do that? Uh, that's something that we wanted to incorporate. You know, there's been some other videos done, but when we met with Norm Latona and really tried to understand what it is that helps keep fish alive, what's the best environment to create for them, uh, one of the things he keyed in on was, you know, you keep that water temperature cool, keeps their metabolism down, that slower metabolism is less stress on the fish. So when we did some testing out here in Tennessee, especially a day like today, when it's probably in the mid nineties and that sun's beating down on the deck of the boat, we were measuring temperatures 125 plus degrees and normal live well lids are actually just metal carpeted and that lets a lot of heat through just from the sun. So during the course of the day, you might add 10, 12 degrees to your live well without doing anything to it. So the live well is insulated, but you have the lid here. Can you show us the lid? Yeah, so just the, the lid itself, you can see basically how thick that is. That's a fully insulated, it's actually an RTM part, a fiberglass lid that we make. So you're able to insulate along the top as well as all around the perimeter. And since we added that chiller system into the live well, you know, we didn't want to be fighting that heat gain you're getting from the, the sun itself beating down on the deck and then trying to chill it. So we wanted to insulate. That's keeping heat out as well as keeping the cold water in. So another part that we've explained about our live well system is that it fills all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. I know boats I've had in the past, they'll, they'll, they'll tout a, let's just say a 40 gallon live well. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily, it might have a 40 gallon capacity, but it's only gonna be 40 gallons if it fills all the way to the top. And most of them have an overflow valve about two thirds of the way up. How, how is ours different? Well, our system uses a float switch that allows us to fill that all the way to the top. And this is another one of those things we learned about just keeping that stress level down on fish is that there's no sloshing in this. So when that water is all the way up and the lid comes down, you don't have that free surface effect, which is causing motion to those fish and potentially hurting them. That's another thing too, is we have big generous radiuses in here. So you don't end up injuring the fish if there is any movement. So how is this live well Built, is it built into the boat as we see it here? Or is it built independently? What is the process of that? And then is it tested or is it just stuck in the boat? And like, we like test all of our boats. So is it tested then or what is the process there? So the process is uh, we actually have a, an outer fiberglass shell and an inner fiberglass shell. They get bonded together and then foam, very similar to what we do when we set the liner in the hull and foam it. Then we bring it over to a sub-assembly station and we put all the components in it and we actually fill it up and we do a leak test before we ever even put it in a boat. Once it's actually installed in the boat, then we do a secondary leak test after everything's in place as part of our lake test, just to ensure that all the fittings and everything is correct. So another question a lot of anglers have that I've heard is how is oxygen introduced? And in we have a auto live well fill, auto maintain fill, auto recirculate. We have manual functions. Where, where is the oxygen put into the water? There's no bubble pump in here that you can see. How is that done? So we looked at a few different options when we were designing this system and a couple of our engineers actually came up with, I mean, what we're using is called a max air venturi and the venturi is just a mechanism that allows you to draw air into some flow by creating separation in that flow. We just couldn't quite find something on the market that did what we needed it to because we were trying to achieve not only bringing air or oxygen into the live well, but also creating good circulation in the live well. So we actually worked with a company called TH Marine and some of their engineers there and a couple of our engineers. We found some components that they had that we tried to make work together, but we didn't quite find it. So we ended up creating a whole new fitting. And that's what you see in the backside of our live wells. 
So it's being injected, the, the air is being injected into the water as it's being returned or recirculated. Both, yeah. When you fill, it's pulling air in, it's oxygenating as you fill. And then we have separate pumps that actually do the recirculation and it will pull oxygen into that when you recirculate. And we actually have it lined up so you get cross flow where it pulls down from the lower chamber up here, oxygenates the water and discharges it back on the opposite side. So as a, as a fisherman, I've fished many turns, we've been trained that every, every, every so often we need to put new water in our live well. Our live well system fills to the top and it maintains its fill so that there's only gonna, more water's gonna be entered when it's needed. Do we need to add that water? Do we need to continuously add new water throughout the day? Do we have a choice to with this system? Or is it about maintaining the water that's in the live well? So uh, there's some strong opinions out there about this, just what people personally feel. Our live well is really designed to do uh, both of those features, actually. You can turn a fill pump on and turn our pump out on, and you can slowly recirculate or refresh the water that's in that system. But the other thing we have with the fish IV, with the chiller system, and with that full auto-maintained fill, there'll be little amounts that are brought in there. We actually are trying to create and maintain an environment. So if you exchange that full tank of water, then you got to start that process over again. You mentioned the chiller system, and that's a, a frequent question we get. Are we trying to refrigerate the fish? Are we trying to maintain it? I typically will set my chiller plate to, if I'm fishing in 80 degree water, I will set my chiller plate at 80 degrees because the fish are comfortable living in that, and I just want to maintain that. If we're fishing in 20 feet of water, a lot of times that we're catching the fish at a much lower level and the water is typically cooler. So does our chiller plate or our chiller system have the ability to chill the water? And if so, below what you're pumping in, and if so, like what are the rates that we've seen its capabilities? So you're right, Chuck, you get different temperatures of water, whether you pull that in your first fill in shallow water or deeper water. The biggest thing, like I mentioned earlier, about that additional heat that comes throughout the day, we're fighting against that. So through the insulation and the fact that the chiller system can operate, you can help to maintain that temperature that you started at in the morning. You don't see that 10 to 12 degree rise throughout the day. But through our testing, we've seen roughly one degree per hour, you're able to cool that system. So you can drop that temperature throughout the day as well. So you won't see an increase. So you might not be able to get it all the way down there, but you can at least cool it down than you, more than you would with any other live well system. Right. So this is a really unique system, fully automated, chilled. We didn't talk about the uh, fish IV system that automatically or manually injects the fish additive into the live well. That's a part of it. That's in some of our other videos. It's really unique. Can you talk about the process of that or what's all involved with that? From the beginning, one of our goals was to create a live well system that was new to the market and really focused on protecting the resource. So we went through a lot of design iterations, even the research with Latona, to try to come up with a solution that works. And that's software development, that's you know just simply designing the live well itself, coming up with a custom fitting that would help us out in our application. And through all that process, we even went through and were recently granted our patent for this. So it was a long process, but this was such a focal point of our design goals that we really put a lot of resources and efforts into creating something that will really last and help protect the resource. That's great. So that's our L2 live well system. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn how our entire boat's built, this is one small section of it. Check out the rest of the videos.